Okay. We're gonna talk about it on uh, the Jason Stockley shooting of Anthony Lamar Smith. Um, now, Anthony Lamar Smith was a three-time convicted felon, primarily of drugs and drug felonies, selling, not not using. And he was accosted by the police while selling drugs again. He allegedly had a gun on him, which is a felony if he were already a convicted felon. Police got in the car. Um, he actually tried to run a few police officers over with his car, which is, you know, any touching of any, <coughs> excuse me, any unwelcome touching of a police officer is a as a felony actively hitting a police officer with a car is a more serious felony it's usually deemed vehicular assault of a police officer or attempted murder of a police officer um, then he went on this wild chase the police had a chase after him they cornered him they got out of the car um, Jason Stockley the officer in question shot him and killed him and there were a couple of points of you know confusion or suspicion. Number one, Stockley allegedly had a personal gun on him, some some kind. I've heard a rifle. I've heard an FN five set up. I've heard a lot of shit. But he allegedly had an, a a private gun on him. Now, most departments do not allow police officers to carry private guns on duty. A police officer will have a private gun that he uses for off-duty carry and that gun is almost always um, known and approved by the department in question and he, he, the officer in question will usually have to re-qualify for the off-duty gun that means twice a year they go to the police shooting range and under the super general police officer they shoot their duty gun and then they shoot their off-duty gun and uh, most police officers try to see if they can get a duty gun to match their an off duty gun to match their duty gun. For instance, your duty gun might be a Glock 19, your off duty gun might be a Glock 26. Okay, something like that. Okay, and, and because you have to be qualified for your duty gun twice a year and your off duty gun twice a year, you very seldom see a police officer with 20 different off duty guns. But while you're on duty, you're supposed to have your duty guns and you're not allowed to have a private gun while on duty. That's just the way it is. And he was suspended for that, so it's pretty obvious that the department believed that he had an off-duty gun or a private gun selling the car or whatever. Another point of contention is that he allegedly said words to the effect of, I'm gonna kill this motherfucker or I'm gonna get this motherfucker or something like that. Um, I personally did not hear it in the audio when I saw the, the chase videos. If you hear it, or please correct me. Okay, but I didn't hear that. And if it did happen, I apologize in advance. And if I am wrong, please correct me. Uh, and the other point of contention or suspicion is that Stockley went back to his car, then went back to the suspect's car. And some people think he put what we call the drop gun in uh, Stockley's car and Stockley's and in the suspect's car, and the and the alleged gun the suspect had and I have his fingerprints on. Now, many many years ago, and you probably see this a lot. You saw it in L.A. Confidential with Russell Crowe. Okay, so you see it in a couple of movies, but it did happen a lot, mostly in the '60s and '70s in big inner cities you would have a police officer kill someone. And the police officer didn't think that the story would hold up. You know, I was chasing the suspect in the alley and the suspect flinched. Or the suspect reached for his um, waistband. So I shot him out of fear. And they don't think the story has enough weight. So what they do is they go to their car and they have an illegal gun in their car you know, serial number scratched off, old, rusty shit. 
How are you going to talk about a suspect a couple months earlier? But they keep an illegal gun in their car. And they take the illegal gun and they point it at the scene and they write in the report that the suspect had that gun. And oftentimes the suspect's fingerprints were on the drop gun. Oftentimes the forensic scientists would analyze it and say, well, based on this, that, that, and the other thing, mathematically, if the suspect had the gun in his hand when you shot him, he would have dropped it. And if the gun was found in his hand. Or they might say the suspect had the gun in his right hand, but his mother's had he was left handed. Okay, that has happened before. Now did stock we plant the illegal gun, the drop gun? Um, people say he did. I don't know. But don't forget, it's entirely possible the suspect could have had something covering his hand when he touched the gun. A lot of suspects are smart enough not to get fingerprints on guns. But we don't know. The case needs to go to trial. There are people in the community in St. Louis that vehemently believe that Stockley planted the gun on the Marksmith. And there are suspects, there are people in St. Louis that believe that the police framed him. He wasn't something to do at all. Um, they planted heroin on him. That's why he went to prison in the first place. I mean, I mean, conspiracy theory upon conspiracy theory. Okay, now, to be perfectly honest, drop guns are almost never used today because all this police supervision see in the 70s they didn't give a shit in the 30s they didn't give a shit okay if you look at police in the 1930s okay they fucking executed people flat out okay they didn't give a shit about court back in the 30s the 70s there were a lot of cops doing dirty shit to get a conviction. Okay? But today, with all the supervision and monitoring and scrutiny, police are very, very seldom doing that stuff. Also, with all the analysis and testing and all this cool shit, you know, in the forensics department, you very seldom see cops do that because they're afraid the forensic scientists will contradict their story especially if the family brings in a private forensic scientist to analyze at their own expense especially if the state police suspect corruption in the department and the state police bring in their guys to analyze it okay so it, it, it doesn't happen that often anymore okay and Officer Stockley was not convicted in court, therefore, in the eyes of the law, he is not guilty. Regardless of what you feel about that, he's not guilty. Now, um, the police thought the verdict would be out later in the day. It ended up being out early in the morning, and they had to rush to get their stuff together, their riot squads, their, you know, road blockings, their, you know, their all their shit together that they used to protect communities and stuff like that. It was a trial by judge, which means that the, the Stockley did not want a jury, he wanted a judge. And tell you the gospel truth, if you're a white cop that kills a black suspect in a predominantly black city, you're better off with the judge trial because the judge trial, the judge is one person and he is completely unbiased. Whereas the jury, you know, you never know. Especially with Al Sharpton, especially with George Soros, especially with all these evil corrupt figures that pollute the minds of the young, okay, pollute the minds of the stupid, okay, so that's nothing I can offer you. And the police did a pretty good job. A couple guys got assaulted, a couple cars, uh, rocks thrown at them, uh, some fuckers went on the highway to block traffic and were arrested. But for the most part, the police were able to quell the situation down, keep it calm. Obviously, you turn on Fox News, and they're trying to talk to the protesters, and the protesters are saying, well, fuck Fox News, and fuck you, and fuck the police, and, and they're saying it live on the air, obviously, so it gets across the airwaves. Um, well, like I said, he's a three-time convicted felon, okay, 
he, he, he's seen on videotape running a police officer over okay so even if he didn't have a gun on him okay you know when, when you have a three time convicted felon that you set catch selling drugs he tries to run a cop over he leads the cops on a city what on a chase in public streets and putting the public in danger okay it doesn't take a lot for the police officer to suspect his life is in danger okay it just doesn't okay because it's the best predictor of past of future behavior is past behavior three time felon selling drugs trying to get cops with his car running through city streets you know endangering people he flinches what are you doing to think mm -hmm. but once again this is the billionth example of, is it is it the two billionth example or the billionth example where you have all this shit going on and once again I mean people always like no justice no peace people always like fuck the police okay well it all boils down to this this is once again a distraction okay it's a distraction police kill less than 200 black people a year they kill more than twice as many white people a year okay and that's including you count you know population differences and shit like that um less than i think maybe one percent of police shootings are not justified the other 99 percent are justified um If a cop does something wrong and he goes to trial and the jury or the judge says not guilty, guess what? You know, OJ was not guilty. Casey Anthony was not guilty. Okay, shit happens. Oh, by the way, OJ was not guilty the first time, but he was guilty the second time and he gets out of prison today. And he's gonna go find other killers. I'm um, gonna. Anyway, you can look at every major city that these things happen. You have a white police officer killing a black suspect, whether it's justified, not justified, guilty, not guilty, grand jury, bench trial, jury trial, whatever the circumstances are, okay? In every single one of these major cities, Ferguson, um, Baltimore, all of them, okay? You have one white police officer killing one black suspect. And in that same town, you will have hundreds, hundreds of black people dying because of black on black violence. Could be black gang members killing each other. Could be, you know, a black honor roll student coming home from reading the blind kids and getting shot because two gang members can't aim straight. Okay, it could be a black old lady sitting on a fucking rocket chair on the porch and guns are going off when she gets hit okay it could be a black citizen killing a black home invader okay but when when a black person dies by violence whether it is justifiable or murder cop on criminal criminal on criminal armed citizen on criminal criminal on innocent person okay 90% of the black people that die by violence today are dying at the hands of black people and it's just a tra it's, it's, it's a fact of life also abortion Black will make up 10% of the population, 40% of all abortions. If you go to a black neighborhood, every corner is either an abortion clinic or a liquor store. Okay, if you look at the inner cities run by Democrats for 60, 70, 80, 100 years, black people in poverty. This is the far left's way of distracting from the problem. Showcase a black suspect, showcase a white cop, put that in the forefront, it's like a magic trick. He's doing this with his hand, doing this with his hand.
And that's the truth. The liberal media, liberal politicians, community organizers, they will do anything to distract from the real problem. Okay? I'm going to put a video link below. It's Malcolm X talking about the Democratic Party and their relation to the black community. 50 some odd years ago. He's been dead for 54 years. Okay? No. 52. He's been, this man has been dead 53 years. And statements he made about Democrats and the black community 55, 56 years ago still ran true. Okay? 50 years ago. I'll put a link below. And he talks about the, um, you know, and as he's talking about it, they're showing images of current Democrats, Hillary Clinton, Al Sharpton, things like that. Okay, and that's just the bottom line. The bottom line is police shootings happen. Okay, you got a couple of years, you got a couple of years, it happens. Okay, but rather than have the courts and the law sort it out peacefully and figure out who's right and who's wrong. We have the idiots taken to the streets, okay? They don't care what the reason is. They don't care what the outcome is. They don't care what the circumstances. They want the cop in jail, period, okay? Look at the Ferguson effect, okay? Al Sharpton convinced people that Darren Wilson killed a black child that was going to their grandmother's house. They con they convinced people of that because it distracts from the problem. Get the people upset at the police, get the people upset at the Republicans, and get the people to think about everything except the facts, okay? Because you if you have if you were to have a black community and the black community were to sit down and rationalize, okay. Maybe the officer was right. Maybe the guy was doing something very wrong and put the officer in danger. And if you were to have the black community say, maybe we shouldn't listen to Al Sharpton. Maybe we shouldn't listen to George Soros. Maybe we should just try to be friends with the police. Okay, maybe we should try to work with the police to make our neighborhood safer. Okay, if a black neighborhood were to come together and rationalize that as a whole, and there's always one or two guys in there, but, but if the entire neighborhood were to sit down and rationalize that as a whole, that would be the end of their society. Because their society functions when the public at large are ignorant and angry at the police. Period. Period. And just look at it, okay? And it's I'm not I don't want to just pick on one race of people because there are white people that are also going to these rallies, okay? My friend from high high school, okay, she's a white college professor who has more money than I will ever have. Okay? Her friends, her cousins are white women that are college graduates, live in nice neighborhoods, in nice houses, and they're talking about, you know, one of her friends said, you know, Mike Brown murdered a child. I mean, I mean Darren Wilson murdered a child. Um, she had a friend that works in the legal profession. I think Darren Wilson should have went to prison for some reason. Um, okay. She advertised the Black Lives Matter prom dress on her, web, on her website, on her Facebook rather. Um, okay. And you see white women 
that are down at the protest with Black Lives Matter signs. Okay, and they're 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 actually be good saying the bullshit of the far left. Police hunt blacks for sport. Police are murdering blacks by the thousand. Police are trying to exterminate the blacks. Okay, they're 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 be good saying the bullshit. And it's scary. There was a um a white woman that had a Black Lives Matter tattoo. And she tweeted it to Vincent D'Onofrio, the actor. And I went on, I'm like, what the fuck is this? And I said, first and foremost, I don't support any terrorist group. Okay, you could show me a terrorist group that's out there killing illegal alien felons. And I'll be against it. I am against any terrorist group who go off their color or their motivation or their religion. And I am against any group using terrorism to achieve a goal, even if I believe the goal is justified. Like, if I believe the end result is justified, but you believe that terrorism is your way of achieving that goal, I am against you. Okay? I've spoken against Christian terrorists. I've spoken against Jewish terrorists. I've spoken against white terrorists. I've spoken against Italian terrorists. Okay? I've spoken against all kinds of terrorism okay and I said this person I said I am against Black Lives Matter because they are a terrorist group okay Black Lives Matter will never protest black and black violence period black and bl black lives matter will never protest abortion period okay black lives matter only protests when the white police officer killed the black suspect regardless of facts and black lives matter has called for the murder of police officers Black Lives Matter has called for the murder of white people. Black Lives Matter members were were, were committing the um, they committed the Dallas police shooting. Um, okay, they are a terrorist group in every sense of the word. And I said I think it's stupid that you would support any terrorist group, in particular a terrorist group that wants to kill police and white people. And I was getting into a discussion with another idiot about it, about, you know, they're terrorists. And uh, I'm talking about, you know, the pigs in a blanket from like bacon. I'm talking about the, we want dead cops and we want it now. And Vincent did not feel blocking. Well, you know what? Fuck him. Okay, not everybody named Vincent is smart. That's the truth. The truth is, this is once again a situation where, yes, there were a couple of shady things, yes, there were a couple of questionable things, but the underlying fact is a suspect was killed by a police officer, and the legal system said that officer is not guilty, and the public wants, quote, justice. Okay, they don't want court justice. Okay, they want stupidity. Okay, um, I gotta get going. It's getting late. It's like 1:48 a.m. over here. Uh, thank you guys.